Pray that your day has been amazing. Amen. Sister Rama, so good to see you. Sister Marilyn, amen. Rejoicing with you over the healing that the Lord is bringing in your body. Amen. Pastor Jackie, amen. Amen. Trey King, good evening. So good to see you. Tell mom we say hello. Amen. Sister Sharon, good seeing you. Amen. Amen. Sister Tosh, Sister Pam. Sister Pam, you are my friend. You make me laugh, amen. But excited to see you and to be on with you tonight, amen. I pray that everybody has had a tremendous day in the Lord. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and so we're rejoicing in Him, and we're choosing to be glad in Him tonight. We're finding so much rest and peace, amen. We are excited, amen. Amen. Well, I'm glad you both are on, okay? Toy, amen. Amen. Well, amen. Well, let's just press in for a minute tonight. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We honor you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for your kindness and your compassion. You tell us to trust in you with all of our hearts and lean not to our own understanding. You said in all of our ways that we should acknowledge you and you said that you would direct our paths. You tell us not to be wise in our own eyes, amen. You tell us to fear the Lord and shun evil. You said that this will be nourishment to our body and health to our bones. And so we just drink deep of your love. Your love is such a rich well we drink of your peace. We drink of your hope. 
You said hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. So I pray tonight, Holy Spirit, that as you minister to me and through me, that longings would be fulfilled, that uh, we would experience a deep and a rich and a abiding satisfaction tonight. Simply because we rest in you, we abide in you. You tell us, come to you all who are heavy laden and burdened, and you've promised to give us rest, but then you tell us the process of rest. You tell us to take your yoke and learn of you, for you are gentle and humble in heart, right? You tell us to allow the teacher, the Holy Spirit, to minister grace to our hearts tonight. And so we're just thankful. We welcome angels, ministering spirits sent to serve us who will inherit salvation. We thank you for angel armies. We thank you for all of the resources that you've given us that help us to grow and to mature. I thank you for fresh mantles being released tonight by faith. I thank you that the people of God, by faith, that they just receive grace. Thank you. You've said that you've moved us into a place of new hearing. And so because of that, we just say thank you. We're just so grateful. We're so appreciative. Father, we just want to experience your heart afresh tonight. We want to experience you. And so, Lord Jesus, thank you for revealing yourself to us through your word. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve us who will inherit salvation? And though we don't worship angels, but we thank you for their assistance. We thank you that they hearken diligently unto your voice, that they are partnering with us as servants to do your will in the earth realm. And so we look to you. We find rest tonight. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, it is good to see everybody tonight. Amen. I pray you've had a great day on purpose. Amen. And if you have your Bibles tonight, if you could turn to Mark chapter one, Mark chapter one. Amen. We want to take a look at a couple things tonight out of Mark chapter one. Amen. And we're just going to allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide and direct our hearts. Amen. Father has some good things that he'd like to say to us. Amen. Mark chapter one. Amen. We're going to go to verse 35. Amen. We're going to read verse 35 through 38, Mark chapter 1, verse 35 through 38, amen. Good evening, Brother Joseph. Good evening, Minister Michelle, amen. Mark chapter 1, <laughs> verses 35 through 38. What is God saying versus what does man want? What is God saying versus what does man want, amen? Verse 35, very early in the morning while it was still dark, Come on, say that with me. Say, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. I want us to think about this as we're listening tonight, about who's the only one that's praying in this text. Amen. Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Amen. Simon and his companions went to look for him when they got up. And when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. When you hear those words, everyone is looking, to, looking for you, what comes to mind? Everyone is looking for you. When we hear those words, what thoughts come to our mind? When we hear those words, what happens in our mind? What happens in our emotions? Everyone is looking for you. But I love Jesus' reply. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Amen. Everyone is looking for you. Amen. If you read the previous verses that kind of lead into this, it's interesting because 
uh, Jesus leaves the synagogue with James and John and they go to the house of Simon and Andrew who are brothers. When they get there, Simon's mother-in-law is in bed sick with a fever and they immediately told Jesus about her. So Jesus went to her, he took her by the hand and helped her up, amen. The fever left her and then she began to wait on them. Notice this, amen. The sickness, the thing that was impacting her body left her. And the first thing she did is as a result of her body being healed, as a result of receiving healing, as a result of being impacted by the touch of Jesus, her first response was to serve him immediately. To serve him immediately. Amen. That evening after sunset, amen, the people brought to Jesus all who were sick and demon possessed. So somehow they heard about this healing and this spread, not so much in the house, but what he was already doing. And people began to come to the house and they came with this expectation of being healed, being delivered, being set free, Right, Pastor Tony was telling us on Sunday that there's a difference between sickness and disease, amen. Jesus was healing people with all kinds of diseases, amen. He also drove out many demons, amen. But he wouldn't let the demons speak because they knew who he was, amen. So it was just a time of very, very powerful kingdom demonstration. It was a time of deliverance. It was a time of being set free. It was a time, amen, where people were beginning to get free from long-standing bondages, amen. But interestingly enough, amen, the mindset that people had was different from the mindset of Simon Peter's mother-in-law. Instead of taking the posture of a servant, they would just go get more sick people, more people that were oppressed by demons, and they would bring them to where Jesus was. Amen. And so they were coming to be healed. But who was coming to serve? Who was coming to follow? Who was coming to be discipled? Who was coming to be a son or a daughter in the kingdom? Who was coming to sit at Jesus' feet and just receive? And I'm not saying that it's bad that they were going to get other people, but it almost could have been a revolving door of hurt people, sick people, wounded people going to just get more and more people. And it would almost turn his ministry into just a ministry, a man of healing and deliverance, but not really a ministry of service, of following, of discipleship and of reproduction. Amen. Now it's interesting because Jesus does this because he loves people. He ministers to them, amen? But very early in the morning, amen, Mark says, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, amen, and he went to a solitary pray place and he prayed. He began to spend time with the Father. He began to just commune with the Father. He began to just walk in the space that he had always had from eternity, connecting with the Father, Amen. Communing with the Father, receiving from the Father, taking in of the Father. Amen. Sharing, receiving. Amen. And as a result, now he's the only one praying. Amen. And all of a sudden, Peter comes and he's like, what are you doing? Everybody is looking for you. Again, they went and got more sick people, more oppressed people, more diseased people. And notice what he said to him, amen? He said, everybody is looking for you. Why? To do what you did yesterday. Everybody is looking for you to do what you did yesterday, amen? And Peter began to come up with his own vision for Jesus for what his day should look like. Now, Jesus responded to him, amen? Amen. Jesus said, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. Here's what's interesting. 
Jesus got different directions in prayer, but just because he got different directions in prayer does not mean he was going to follow those directions because other people had expectations. And if we're not careful, we will let other people's expectations become our current vision. You didn't hear me. Other people had expectations. Peter said, everybody is looking for you. And he was heaping expectations of others upon Jesus. What if Jesus hadn't went to prayer? What if Jesus hadn't been connected to the Father? What if Jesus hadn't been more concerned with doing the Father's will? Maybe he would have come out of prayer, but maybe he wouldn't have had courage to tell Peter, listen, I know that there are people that are waiting on me to do things. I know that there are people who have expectations. I know that there are people who think that my number one goal is to meet their needs and to do what they want. Amen. But when I was in prayer, Father gave me different directions. When I was in prayer, Father is sending me to a new place. When I was in prayer, Father said, go this way. Who is it that we are allowing in our lives to put their expectations on us? Now, remember, Jesus is the only one that's in prayer. <laughs> Watch out for people that don't pray, but have an expectation. Watch out for people that don't pray, but have a need. Watch out for people, a man, that don't pray, that don't commune, that don't spend time with the Father, that don't wait on Him, that aren't really hearing His voice, that aren't really connected to His will. Watch out that their expectation does not get on you and we move in the power of God and maybe they get healed, but Father's not pleased because we're not doing His will. We are doing other people's expectations and we're calling other people people expectations God's will. Again, what do we hear when we hear the words, everybody is looking for you? For some of us, we think that means it's time to do ministry. Maybe it's not time to do ministry. Maybe it's time to step back because in everybody's looking for you, that could speak to an addiction we have to do things for other people. That could speak to a need that we have that we're supposed to be getting met in prayer, but we're getting it met by servicing other people. But by servicing other people, we may stay in a place too long. Amen. Amen. Apostle Tony told us on Sunday, this could be a sacred cow. People's expectations could be a sacred cow. Listen, doing what people want instead of hearing clearly from the Lord what he wants. This is the believer's battle. I'm not saying that the people didn't have real needs, amen, but listen to what he said in verse 38. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else. Listen, let us. He said, Peter, 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 you are carrying the wrong expectations because you're supposed to be moving with me. You're not supposed to be coming to me telling me what I should be doing for other people. I should be telling you where we're going. Amen. But when people have our heart greater than the Father, we will come and we will tell Jesus what he should be doing instead of coming in the presence of Christ and humbling ourselves and saying, what did the Father tell us to do today? Where is the Father sending us today? Amen. Where is it that the Father wants us to go? Amen. We know that Jesus was going to continue to demonstrate the kingdom through teaching and preaching and healing. We know that he was going to continue to heal sicknesses and diseases. We know that he was going to continue to cast out demons. We know that that is true. But Peter tried to make yesterday the place, but God was saying, I'm trying to move into a new place. I'm trying to move into a new season. I'm trying to move into a new sphere. I'm trying to bring you into new relationships. I'm trying to bring you into new opportunities. I'm trying 
trying to bring you into new entrepreneurships. I'm trying to bring you into more than just yesterday because what I did yesterday was good. What I'm doing now is better and what I'm going to do tomorrow is great. But if you only want what I did yesterday, you will hear the voice of man over my voice. And if you want to let their expectations sit on you, and if you want to call that ministry, that's okay. But I'm not going to bow down to what they want. I'm going to call them to follow me. I'm going to call them to move with me. I'm going to call them to stop letting the expectation of man be ministry. Is anybody hearing me tonight? Amen. Is anybody in the room tonight? Amen. This is so good. Thank you, Father. Amen. So he was communing with the Father. He was connected to the Father. He was conscious of the Father. Listen, if we don't get the expectation of people all off of us, we can commune with the Father. We can connect with the Father, but we'll be more conscious of what people want. Who is it that's trying to be a weight on us in this season? What need is trying to be a weight on us? Who is it that has a legitimate need and they need to chase Jesus like we chase? Jesus, but instead of us letting them chase Jesus, we're bringing their expectation and we're trying to hinder what Jesus wants to do. My goodness. Peter brought the people's expectations and he tried to make the people's expectations the will of God. Amen. He said, do what you did yesterday in the same way and the same place. Do what you did yesterday. Peter said, listen, I've rounded up a whole bunch of people. And if you just do what you did yesterday in this place, watch this. You can be popular. You can be famous. You can be successful. Watch out. They'll even give you money. They'll even give you an offering. They'll even make a name for you. You can grow a ministry here. You can plant a church here. You can do great things here. But listen, we can be doing what man wants and we can get paid. We can be successful, we can be popular, and we can miss the voice of the Father. Because the voice of the Father has to trump needs in ministry. See, this is this is a mature word tonight, amen? This is a mature word because sometimes Father wants to move and we want to stay. And we're asking God, but we haven't prayed. Listen, the only person in the text that was in prayer was Jesus. Peter wasn't in prayer. The people weren't in prayer. And Peter is trying to tell the one that's been praying what to do. Who is it in our lives that, listen, they say they pray, but they have the wrong motive. They say they pray, but they have the wrong perspective. They say they pray, but listen, when they come out of prayer, they haven't heard anything fresh. They have haven't heard anything new. They haven't heard any revelation and they just want to keep doing stuff over and over and over. And watch this. We can get results. We can get paid. We can build a monument. We can become famous and we can, we can miss the father's will. Amen. Let us go somewhere else. Listen, Peter was so attached to people from yesterday that he was getting ready to miss his today. He was getting ready to miss the move of God. He was he was stuck in what God did and he was getting ready to miss what God was doing. Let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. Watch this. That is why I have come. Jesus isn't stagnant. Amen. Jesus isn't um, he isn't stationary. Amen. Jesus isn't going to just stay in one building. He's not just going to stay in one body of believers. He's not just going to stay in one part of town. Amen. He's not just going to hang out. Amen. In the suburbs. Amen. He wants to get down in the hood. Amen. He wants to be with the affluent and the needy. Amen. He's not just going to hang out in the black community. He's not just going to hang out in the white community. He's not just going to hang out in the Hispanic community. He's not just going to hang out in the Chinese community. He's bigger than all of these communities and we've got to get back to the place where we chase him and stop giving him directions, stop giving him orders, stop telling him what to do and telling people we have vision and we've heard from the Lord. 
Peter was somebody that was being trained to hear the voice of the Lord, but sometimes the expectation of man, the expectation of yesterday, the success of yesterday, the popularity of yesterday, the fame of yesterday can drown out the voice of the Lord today. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for what you did yesterday. Thank you that you're healing people. Thank you that you're setting people free. Thank you that you're teaching us about the kingdom. Amen. Thank you that you're raising us up to lay hands on the sick. Thank you that you're teaching us how to prophesy. Thank you for angelic ministry. We thank you for all the help that we need. But what we need more than that is we need to hear what you are saying. How many of us would have went backwards and got results instead of me moving forward because maybe the people that got healed were now supposed to become followers. Maybe they were supposed to become God chasers. Maybe they were supposed to be the ones that ran after the Lord instead of running after other sick people. My goodness. Amen. Do what you did yesterday in the same way, in the same place. Amen. Jesus said, I've come to bring life to all. He said, I came to preach. I came to announce. I came to proclaim. I came to herald. I came to make known. I came to officiate. Amen. Jesus was creating a pursuit. Those who had experienced healing and deliverance now were supposed to pursue him into discipleship, into relationship, into communion, now that they got healed. Because see, listen, amen, when we are sick, when we are hurt, when we have diseases, and when we are demonically oppressed, we can't hear. Jesus did so much healing because the people couldn't hear. But now that we can hear, we shouldn't let our past pain, uh oh, we shouldn't let our past dilemmas, we shouldn't let our past circumstances try to be the current voice of the Lord. Amen. So Jesus was coming to create a pursuit. Amen. The kingdom was moving and so should his followers. Amen. The kingdom was moving and so should his followers. Amen. The goal was communicating, casting out, and calling others. The goal was communicating, casting out, and calling others. Amen. Everyone is looking for you to do what you did yesterday to bring relief to their circumstances, to stay here only. Peter was submitting to the will of the people and calling it the will of God. People were, Peter was submitting to the will of the people and calling it the will of God. If we are not sure of the Father's voice, we will always submit to another voice. Do we know that people's expectations can be a voice in our life? Some of us wonder why we're so tired, even though we pray. Listen, even though Jesus prayed and even though he heard the father, he still had to have courage when he came out of prayer to tell other people that's not God's will for me. He had to have courage to tell other people that's not how the father is leading me. He had to have courage to tell other people that's not the way we're going. Listen, sometimes when we come out of prayer, we're supposed to tell other people what they're supposed to be doing because they're under the weight of the expectation of other people and they don't even know that they're not hearing. They don't even know that they're not receiving. So we're not just, listen, prayer is not just about me hearing from the Lord. Prayer is about me becoming a vessel so other people can, listen, lay aside every weight and every sin. Listen, human expectations, expectations from yesterday, other people's expectations can be a weight. And we got to lay that thing aside. Amen. I'm so glad that Jesus was praying. Who is it that we're supposed to be praying for? Who is it that we're supposed to be releasing fresh light? Amen. Who's stuck in yesterday that needs a word from the Lord? Who is it that got healed yesterday but doesn't know that Jesus wants them to follow? They think they're just supposed to go get more sick and hurt people. And we're calling it ministry. <laughs> 
If we're not sure of the Father's will, then we will let another voice or another agenda or another need or another place become the place we think we're supposed to be. Are you in the right place and how do you know? Well, pastor, I'm out doing ministry. Well, pastor, I'm out here meeting needs. That's the problem with the church now. If the church was out here meeting needs, more people would be a part of the church. If the church was out here serving, more people would be a part of the church. That's the problem now. You can't find anybody out here helping anybody. Amen. What if that's a past move? I'm not saying what you're saying isn't true, but what if that's not the truth? What if father said we're supposed to duplicate, we're supposed to reproduce, and we're supposed to do what God did yesterday the same way, but in a different place. Can we have success in yesterday and reproduce it in a different place? Or do we get to tell God where he reproduces? And we're calling this vision. And we're saying that father spoke. And he did. He spoke to Jesus, and then Jesus spoke to Peter based upon what he heard. If we're going to follow effectively in this season, we've got to lay aside the expectation of man for what God is saying. I'm not saying that there won't be times when the Lord will have us labor. I'm not saying that there won't be times where the Lord will plant us for a season, but the Lord is the one that tells us when to rise up. Father is the one that gives us directions. So Father, I break the false responsibility of the expectation of yesterday, man, and I just, I just see light breaking forth. I just thank you, Father, that there's understanding, that there's clarity coming to people's minds. I thank you that as a result of this word, that we're going to get a greater clarity concerning what you're saying. And we won't divorce ourselves from what you said because he still demonstrated the kingdom but we won't be so quick to tell you. Help us to rest in prayer. Help us to hear from you and then give us courage. Some of us, I hear Father saying that he's not so much anointing us afresh with the Holy Spirit as much as he's giving us courage when we come out of prayer to not only do, see, it would be easy if I could come out of prayer and just do what the Lord said. No, there may be people on my team. There may be people in my family. There may be people in my community. There may be people that I'm supposed to be connected with. There may be people that the Lord wants to use me to also release them from the expectation of yesterday. Yesterday isn't bad, amen, but the expectation can try to tell me what I'm doing today. Who is supposed to get free from the expectation of people tonight? Say it's in prayer. It's in listening to the Father's voice. It's in being sensitive. Listen, there's a reason the Lord told Joshua to be strong and courageous. Sometimes we need courage, but we're leaning into strength. Other times we need strength, but we're leaning into courage. Now, Jesus just told Peter like it was because he was God. Sometimes it's not always that easy for us. Amen. Who's the Peter in our life that we aren't able to have courageous conversations with? Peter can be a spouse. Peter can be a girlfriend. Peter can be a boyfriend. Peter can be a child. Peter can be a boss. Peter can be a coworker. Peter can be a brother or sister in the kingdom. Peter can be a leader in the kingdom. See, this is for believers. The Lord spoke to us on Sunday about the believer. 
Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Listen, listen to what Luke 4 says. Amen. And then we're done. Listen to this. This is Luke 4. Amen. Luke chapter 4. Amen. This is verse 42. Amen. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him. And when they came to where he was, watch this. They tried to keep him from leaving. They tried to keep him. See, this is why the expectation of man can be dangerous because they were getting ready to make a sacred cow. They were getting ready to try to capture and contain the move of God instead of letting the move of God go. They didn't want him to leave. And watch this. They probably put Peter up to it. Watch out for people who have been put up to stuff by other people that try to steal the fresh vision that God's trying to give us. Amen. This is why prayer is so important. I don't believe that if we're all praying now individually, we might be hearing some different things, but I don't believe that if we're all praying that we're not hearing the same thing. Amen. They tried to keep Jesus. They tried to contain him, right? They tried to monumentalize him, amen? He could have been successful. He could have been famous. He could have been popular, but he would have missed the will of God. <laughs> People's expectations can be good, amen? I want to challenge us tonight to go back and read these verses, amen? Mark chapter 1, verses 35 through 38. Luke chapter 1, verses 42, amen. Verse, really verses uh, 38 through 44. And maybe if, 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 maybe some of our depression isn't really depression. Maybe we just, uh, the fear of man is stopping us from confronting other people's expectations. And I can tell you, because I've lived this here. If that's where you are tonight, yeah, we will be depressed. Because what's on the inside of us, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is greater than people's expectations. And if we are grieving the Holy Spirit, of course we're not going to feel good. So I just want to encourage us, pray into this word tonight and see what Father does. I just really sense that there's really a grace and a release of healing tonight. So, Father, I just thank you for healing. I thank you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you're healing people, you're setting people free. You're causing people to be strong in you. For some, I just hear you saying that you're giving them their joy back. You're restoring for some people. I come against where some people have had their voice silenced for so long. And I thank you, Father, for restoring people's voices. Amen. I come against the spirit of Python. I just see um, and, and, and I command that you uncoil yourself tonight in Jesus' name. And I declare that you loose people in Jesus' name. And I break your power. Amen. And people won't feel like they're suffocating. Amen. Their lungs won't be overflowing with fluid tonight. And I bless your people tonight. Thank you for healing people from a long-standing migraines. Amen. Ulcers in Jesus' name. And I bless what you're doing and I agree for healing. And I thank you for this word. And we look to you tonight. I thank you for your grace. We honor you. We worship you. We lean into you. And we trust you. We thank you for your goodness. Now, Father, use this word to build your kingdom, to draw us close to you and help us to value prayer more and more in these last days. We thank you and we praise you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Minister Sabrina, it's good to see you. Amen. Apostle Tony, I see you on, my friend. I just thank the Lord for you. Amen. There's just, Apostle Tony, there's just a refreshing and a stirring. Amen.
And I just see that Father is continuously refreshing you. And you're just, and you and your wife, you're just, you're just in a season of refreshing, amen. And you're just in a season, amen, where the Lord is just going to continue to refresh. And I just speak ease into your marriage, ease into your parenting. Ease, amen. I just see uh, in your classroom where, amen, there's just going to be angelic assistance, amen. And even more, there's just going to be a more pronounced move of the Lord, even in your classroom, even in your school, amen. I just see you having more favor with the administrators, amen. And the Lord's just going to really begin to open uh, doors of opportunity and favor. And so we just believe that and we just declare that tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. I just see also that there are mantles of deliverance. Amen. That Father is just releasing tonight. So I just encourage you by faith, if that's you and if that's bearing witness with your spirit, by faith to just receive it. Amen. And with these anointings, amen, there are always trainings. There are always things that we have to go through, amen. And I was talking, amen, with Pastor Tony on Monday. And with these trainings and with the things that the Lord says to us, amen, there is hard work. There, there is things that we have to do in the natural. And sometimes those things aren't always convenient. Those things uh, won't always uh, be on the time schedule that we want, amen, amen. But it's, it's okay to labor. It's okay to spend that time. I spent a whole year with Bishop Hammond in our course, amen, your highest calling, amen. We're looking forward to prophetic heritage, uh, heritage, excuse me, on November 8th, amen. But it takes time and it takes work. Grace never makes us lazy. Grace empowers us to work hard, amen. And so, amen, I just release a fresh charge tonight in Jesus' name we pray. And we say thank you and amen. Amen. Well, friends, we love you. We're excited to be with you and see you. Amen. If you'd like to be a blessing to our ministry, amen. If you go to our website, agkm.net, amen. And if you uh, you can give there as the Lord leads, whether it's a one-time offering or if you want to be a part of continuous giving, you can sow there, amen. And uh, also you can go to our cash app, dollar sign, advancing God's kingdom, all one word, amen. And you can sow as the Holy Spirit leads you. We believe this is good ground. Amen. And so we invite you to sow and be a part of what the Lord is doing. Amen. Amen. If you can be in the house, join us. Amen. Sunday morning, 10 a.m., 2450 Del High Commerce Drive, Hope, Michigan, 48842. Amen. And so we are just excited. Amen. And so I just, again, I encourage you to go back, listen to this word, lean into those scriptures. Amen. God is really for the believer. Amen. The fivefold is for the equipping and the perfecting of the saints. Amen. But we are here to make an impact. Amen. And so we love you guys and we just speak blessings. Amen. The Lord bless us and the Lord keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us. Amen. The Lord give us his shalom peace. Amen. And we just receive of your goodness. We drink rich of you. And we thank you for your goodness and we thank you for your favor. And we just receive wholeheartedly of what you're saying and doing. Amen. If we're not spending time in prayer, how can somebody prophesy to us and be confirmation? There are times when people prophesy to us and they give us direction and clarity. But there should be some times, amen, when we have confirmation. We're going to give some instructions Sunday morning about what to do with our prophetic words. Amen. And so we thank you and we love you guys. Again, blessings to you. Oh, man, we love you guys. And just so good to see everybody on tonight. Amen. So we pray that you're encouraged. Again, continue to have a great week on purpose. Amen. Seasons are changing and cycles are being broken in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember to protect the baby. Paul told Timothy, guard the good deposit that has been entrusted to your care. Amen. Seasons are changing. Cycles are being broken and protect the baby. Amen. So we love you guys. We'll see you soon. Amen and blessings.